Let's talk about sleep restriction. In today's video, we're really going to be looking at this idea of sleep restriction or the principle of it and how I actually use it in a different way in my practice to help people like you overcome long-term insomnia and sleep problems. I don't use sleep restriction in its exact scientific way that you might have heard about or maybe you've seen articles about. I actually really look at how we practically apply it into a treatment plan so that it can be successful in helping the person to overcome their long-term insomnia or sleep problems. I don't even use the name sleep restriction with it because actually what I found is often if somebody has been struggling with um, not sleeping well or not sleeping a lot of hours, telling them to restrict their sleep often actually raises more emotions, raises more nervousness, and that's not really helpful in order to help the person become relaxed during that process of change. So in today's video, we're really going to talk about the way I use it um, and how I apply it in my practice so that it can really create consistently good results and support the person to retrain their body and the mind to fit sleep into a time frame. Hence, sleep time frame is what I call it. Now, before we do that, I wanted to welcome you back if you are part of my community already. Uh, thank you so much for your continued support as always. If you are brand new, then let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Beatrix Schmidt. I'm a sleep coach, a professional speaker, and the creator of the Sleep Skills for Life program, which is very much my way of helping people like you to put in place the practical tools, techniques, exercises, in order to really overcome their long-term insomnia and sleep problems so that they can enjoy sleep for many years to come. Good quality sleep, good quality energy levels in the morning, and really be able to not have to think about sleep problems anymore. And when I work with people, it's really important that we focus on skill set building rather than just randomly applying tips, advice that is not appropriate and therefore does not create results. And today we're really going to talk about that as well when it comes to this idea of sleep restriction. So before we move on to the main content of the video, I wanted to ask you to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't yet. Hit that little bell too so that I can let you know when I post new videos. And if you like the content of the video at the end, hit that like button below as well. Now let's turn our attention to this idea of sleep restriction and how I apply it in my practice. I'm not going to talk to you about the exact science of it because I think um, there's plenty of other resources out there that can explain that to you. I'm really going to focus on the practical application of the different parts of this idea, this principle. Now, sleep restriction is part of a treatment plan which is cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. So what's really important first is you don't just pick out this one without the support of the other parts of that treatment plan. And again, sleep restriction is one part of it. So it's really important not to necessarily just start there. Really understand the, the process that, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy takes you through rather than just putting one thing in place. Now, in my practice, I use a lot of different principles and cognitive behavioral therapy, I apply it in a way that it really works with the person. I don't follow a very structured six session uh, treatment plan. I really work with the person to figure out what are the things we need to put in place to create long-term results. And it will depend on that person. So when it comes to this idea of sleep restriction, the first step of it is to really look at what is appropriate for you. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of the clients that I come across over the years who have experimented with sleep restriction often simply just pick the time frame and put it in place. Now, the challenge with that one is the idea of putting a sleep time frame in, or you can call it sleep restriction if you want. If you're picking a time frame for your sleep, which isn't appropriate for you, isn't appropriate for your lifestyle or your circumstances, then it's less likely to even work for you to begin with. So the way I figure out what that sleep time frame is that we need to put in place, we have to start with measuring sleep through a sleep diary. 
I would really suggest you don't use through uh, you don't use devices to do that. I would suggest you really look at measuring your sleep through a sleep diary so that you can really understand the dynamics of your sleep. What might be waking you up in the morning? Maybe you have children, maybe you have to set an alarm in order to get to work. Every one of us has a different lifestyle. So it's more important to understand the dynamics of what happened rather than just the science of the sleep data you might gather from a gadget. So I hope that's clear for you. Now, once you understand what happens over a seven to 10 day period, you're gonna be in a better position to really understand what is that time frame that will work for you. The reason I don't use sleep restriction as a name for it is because often, if you have been struggling for a long time, even that can cause more nervousness, even anxiousness, or even stress in terms of how relaxed you are when you approach your sleep time. Now, when it comes to picking the sleep time, another thing that's very important is never to go under five hours time in bed. I actually use a slightly larger time frame. I normally start with about the six hour, but again, it depends on the person, depending on the dynamics of their sleep. Because what I do first is really help the person to start being able to be more relaxed in bed. If your time frame is too short, you often end up going to bed either concerned about the sleep time or you're almost on edge because you're already preparing for how difficult it's going to be when you then have to get out of bed. So again, I really look at the person, what kind of circumstances they have, do we have to deal with nervousness as well as the, the sleep challenges and so on. So I don't tend to stick with the five hour rule um, I tend to have a larger one, depending again on the circumstance. Again, when it comes to actually calculating that sleep time, it might be higher depending on the person. So it really is based on the person and what their circumstances are. So when you have picked an appropriate time frame, I want you to also pause and think about how it makes you feel. If the time frame you picked already makes you feel nervous, or already makes you feel like, oh gosh, you know, I'm sleeping quite little hours or not enough hours, and now I'm gonna short, shorten that even more. If you're feeling nervous about it, then often what I find is that it's not an appropriate time frame. You don't wanna keep being nervous about it every single day because that will add to the lack of relaxation. So that's where it comes to measuring first, picking an appropriate time frame. Please don't just pick based on somebody's guess or suggestion. It's gotta to have to come from you as a person and your sleep dynamics. It's never gonna be something that can be guessed. So that's a really important part. The second part of this is to really, we call it anchor the time frame. And um, what I mean by that is simply to pick a time frame that you counted back from. Now, when I work with clients, I really look at their morning. What do they need to do? What time do they need to get out of bed? Uh, let's say if somebody has small children, that's gonna be very different to someone who is maybe single or in a relationship and maybe they work from home or they have to go into an office. So again, all of these different things will, will help us establish what is your morning time that you have to either get out of bed for and so on. So what's important is you really pick a time for your morning that is going to work. Please don't shift that around. So picking a sleep time is not just picking one and then moving it around. You have to actually help the body and the mind to really work with the time frame, which means that the time frame needs to be stable. So picking a morning time is going to help you to anchor or fix at least one part of that. And what I would then suggest is you work backwards and then you put in place an evening or, or lights out time as well. Now, again, there's more things around it. So just picking a time frame is one part of it. I talk about a lot of different things and I would have addressed some of these things even in the earlier videos when I talk about this treatment plan. But what's important is you really work together with all those different tools and techniques and add those puzzle pieces together. 
One causal piece is this idea of sleep time that has to be supported by other things, okay? So once you picked the morning anchor, you work backwards and then you figure out how long that time frame you're putting in place and you pick your lights out time and that needs to become stable as well. If you move it around all the time, then you're not actually really helping the body and the mind to work with what you have put in place. And this is again another thing that I see when people have picked a random time that didn't work for them and then they ended up sort of messing around with it uh, over days because it didn't quite work out the way that they either expected or it didn't improve their sleep. So once you have had that really good idea of what the sleep time is and you've actually really understood what your morning is and anchored it from that from the morning backwards you then really have to give it time this idea of sleep time or you can call it sleep restriction if you want it's not gonna sort out everything overnight what you need to do after it is you need to measure so you again, you continue measuring for seven to 10 days and really understand, is this working for me? But during that sort of seven to 10 days, don't move it around. Because if you're always moving it around, you're not really understanding whether or not it is working or it isn't working. And this is kind of the way that I apply it in my practice. We have a very good conversation about what we're picking, incorporate a lot of that measurement that we've done before. So we're picking an appropriate time frame an appropriate time to anchor in the morning supported with a couple of different things so that you can actually become successful at applying it and once we then measured afterwards for seven to ten days we really start to understand whether or not it is actually working whether or not we need to review it whether or not we maybe need to pick a slightly different time frame so it is a work in progress just because you pick one thing straight away does not mean that it is going to be completely practically appropriate for you, especially if you're doing it by yourself. Now, obviously, when I work with clients, I review these things so that we're never guessing. The person is not left with it. I often tell them, OK, this is what we're going to do. And we then work with it. We then review it proactively so that the person is not just randomly doing something that is not creating results. And what you want to achieve out of looking at the sleep time frame is better sleep efficiency. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on sleep efficiency, I'll link it here because that, that video really explains what I mean by it and what you, how you would want to even approach sleep efficiency. But the purpose of creating the sleep time or using this idea of sleep restriction is to put your sleep into a time frame where it can become very efficient as well. So better quality, better amounts of sleep within the time frame, so that you can really start reaping the benefits of that better quality sleep. So if you put in place a time frame, but your sleep has not really improved through that, then again, this gives us an idea that something is missing or not working. Now, when I work with clients, again, we need to give this time. And we need to support it through other tools and techniques. So just because you put a time frame in, it does not mean that that's it. You need to look at what's showing up. What are the challenges? What are the other things that might be still happening? Support those different challenges with tools and techniques so that you can have a better picture of really getting to a better place when it comes to sleep efficiency. So very simply, sleep efficiency is going to be taking that time frame and using most of that time frame to actually sleep rather than anything else. So if it takes you a long period of time to fall asleep, we want to shorten that and see that shorten normally sort of down to about more, no more than 15, 20 minutes. That's what I aim for with my clients. If you then maybe wake up several times in the night, what you want to see is that those wakings have started to decrease or they have started to become shorter. That's how you're really going to see that improvement in sleep efficiency. And of course, if you then have maybe issues waking up too early and not being able to fall back to sleep again till the time that you're sort of anchored your sleep to, then we look at that as well. How to help you to really extend your sleep till the time that we want to extend the sleep till. So this is the way to look at improving that sleep efficiency and actually understanding whether or not it is improving. Just through sleep restriction or sleep time frame, 
that doesn't mean that all those things improve by themselves. Sometimes what it means that if, if we're seeing that things have sort of stayed the same, we there, therefore need to apply more, more tools or techniques or different ways so that you can really start improving those other bits and pieces that you're still having challenges with. So these are all the different things that I look at in a practical way when I look at this idea or this principle of sleep restriction. I use it in a different way, as I mentioned, I use simply calling it sleep time and really understanding what that sleep time is that the person is gonna work with and really approaching it from that way. What I found in my practice is when I apply these things in slightly different ways um, and really educate the person about it, support the person with it, it helps the person to become more relaxed. Of course, when you're more relaxed physically, emotionally and mentally, you're going to be able to really improve your sleep because tension, frustration, disappointment, nervousness, anxiousness is, are all things that are going to take you further away from relaxation. And we don't want that when we really look at this plan of helping you to overcome your long-term insomnia and sleep problems. So I hope that this video has helped you to maybe clarify some of the things that are not quite working for you with this principle um, and also giving you some ideas where to improve it. I always say that if you've been experimenting for a period of time and it's not working, then an assessment is in order or working with someone who's practiced in the field is in order because you might not actually see the bigger picture and see what might be those gaps. And unfortunately, this is what I see in my practice when people come to me to seek support. They might have used all the right principles, but not either in a good combination or not some of them that are more helpful or less helpful for them. So often it really uh, means that if you're not getting results, then something is not quite right in the application or the tools and the techniques that you brought to this plan. So thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation about this idea of cognitive behavioral therapy and the treatment plan. So I'll walk through all the different steps. And if you obviously haven't watched some of the previous videos, then I would suggest you continue exploring this, inter this practical interpretation of the treatment plan itself. So thank you again, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.